thank you, thanks to our experts who um, agreed to be uh, to attend our discussion panel, which is devoted to trends in mobile uh, words and uh, which is growing rapidly. First of all, I would like to uh, introduce to you our ex experts because these are really, really uh, interesting people with great knowledge worth to listen to. Okay, so starting from the right. Uh, Mirosław Dymek, one of the most experienced Polish game developers. He started his career in 1996 by creating RTS called Polanie. <laughs> and even I remember two days ago we were talking about uh, former CEO of uh, Reality Pump. Since uh, 2014, he's an owner and lead game designer in HomeNet Games. Yes, that's right. Uh, Tobias Edel. Uh, plus 10 years um, experience in gaming industry, gaming industry veteran, uh, leads the business uh, development uh, at Inno Games, one of the leading free-to-play, uh, German free-to-play company. Um, he's specializing uh, in building and strengthening relations with media partners such as newspaper, TV shows, gaming websites. <laughs> so, Shaglar Eger. Uh, Shaglar has been uh, with Good Game Studio since uh, 2012, when he is responsible for analyzing and the potential of emerging markets such as Turkey, Mena Asia, and establishing a Good Games a market player in high potential countries and regions. He wears multiple hats in his current role and his expertise in markets like China have led the strategic partnership for Good Game Studios. First question is connected with uh, the success of mobile markets. Mobile games market grows above expectation. Compound annual growth rate 2016-2017 is more than 16%. If the numbers are so high and good, is there any sense to invest any more in the screens than mobile screen? In any other screen than mobile screen? Okay. Uh, well, my opinion, it's uh, if you if you talk uh, about pure investment uh, with the goal to get uh, higher return on investment, everything is simple. You look in the directions where is your passion, where you think your experience and knowledge is, and you go there. So if it is mobile gaming, then certainly you invest uh, all your time, money, and power of your team over there. Yes. If uh, the passion is some somewhere different. Um, then you go to, I don't know, to VR or to something else. Uh, it's all uh, a right positive and it's only a question to the development studio itself uh, and to the publisher uh, where in what industry he would like to work. Yeah, I'm choosing for myself, for my team, many different directions and uh, that's why I'm trying not to answer on this question to myself. I make it easier. Yeah, um, for me I would say I mean, since I'm observing the market and I see think, uh, what's happening there, I would say mobile first. It's not VR, it's not AR, it's mobile, because mobile is still growing, still on the, on the rise. And um, actually, it's also quite easy to enter the mobile market uh, globally, because it's just one build, one APK, you can upload it in on Google, on iOS, and you can immediately reach out to millions of people 
Of course, it's not that easy to get visibility, but even organically, you can grow, and it also depends on which uh, genre your game is. If you're, let's say, you're trying to compete with strategy games, it's going to be tough. But if you say, hey, you don't want to compete with strategy games, you want to do something way different, racing games, such a thing like that, you can make a success. Not easy, but it's doable. So I would say mobile is still the most important thing. But of course, for us, since we're also very successful in web games, web is also and will always be a, a, a good reason to develop get, um, web games too. So. Yeah, the thing is, from my point of view, so or as we as InnoGame also um, go mobile first, but as there are new technologies out, they're easy to adapt to other platforms. Um, so if we see that a title is successful for us, for our focus now for mobile, um, maybe we will also adapt it to browser or maybe to console. So I don't know, but uh, at the moment for us, yeah, it's mobile first. Yeah, okay. <laughs> For us too, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, and it's uh, mobile first. Uh, uh, also, in this way that uh, every games we do first, we release it on mobile platforms. Uh, so actually, on Android because uh, uh, you can do it quickly. You can uh, release the game and you can then uh, patch it every day, make updates, uh, react to the uh, players' needs. So this is uh, this is very good uh, uh, platform for for start every new project. And then when it's uh, uh, major, uh, uh, then we uh, go to uh, to other platforms. Uh, but also the the growth of the growth of the uh, uh, mobile market, uh, as I see, it's uh, it also has a really strong uh, uh, demographic uh, basis, uh, because uh, uh, let's say computer players, uh, uh, they knew computers before. The kids today. I'm talking about three years, four years uh, old kids, small kids. Uh, the first thing they have in hands is a mobile, is a tablet. They don't know about the computers yet. They are uh, already playing. So when they are growing up, for them, it's mobile starts to be like the like the uh, first and basic platform. They they get used to it. For us, we've we've been uh, a computer players, a console players, uh, and then mobiles around. So for us, it's like. Mm, the screen is too small, the games are uh, too simple, this kind of thing. But for the new generation, it's uh, opposite. So this is why uh, we are investing in this uh, area. Yeah, but uh, let me ask you a uh, kind of tricky question. Is there any more sense to invest in mobile screen when more than 90% of mobile revenue is generated only by a few companies? The thing is that the revenue is so huge, and it's just a big number. I think it's now bigger than uh, classic movies, for example. Um, so yes, it's 90% by a few companies, but the thing is that the 10% uh, is still a huge lot of amount of money so that yeah, you can get. So the, 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 the piece of the cake, it's, it's enormous. So. Maybe uh, a few things to what you said. <coughs> I mean, yeah, the small kids are used to tablet and smartphone, etc. But the old kids are not that. So the old kids are above um, 25 to 30, 40, and they will live the next um, 20, 30, 40 years with laptop, PC. And this is also a reason why we still um, n uh, think that uh, web is not dying, but um, you have less competition there. and. I mean, web is still a very big opportunity to focus on. It's not main focus, like Tobias said. It's easy to adapt a mobile first title to web. So with HTML5 and I don't know, there are a lot of technical solutions. I don't know them all, but um, that's why I would still say web is still potentially, uh, has still potential. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> you see on the number, but we've been just uh, in the first question we've been talking about this uh, growing mobile, and if it has sense to invest uh, uh, anything more into it. Uh, and uh, yeah, as I said, we we also go to to the web everywhere. Uh, but you are making your games for as a cross-platform, yes, to show the beauty of the game on bigger screens, is right? Ah, uh, yeah, that's uh, what we've been talking before. Uh, yeah, we start with our games uh, as a mobile game. Uh, so we try to be uh, nice looking graphically because that's what 
people, that's the first thing you see from the game. Uh, and then uh, so we release uh, it uh, on, the, on the PC, uh, Mac OS, Linux, uh, web, uh, uh, everywhere on the big screens. And this is uh, cross-platform. So you start your game on the, on the mobile, and then you go back to your home, you log into your account and uh, keep playing on, your, on whatever machine you have there. And you got 15 million downloads, yes? Uh, uh, no, 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 not, not so much. I have like uh, 15, 15, yes, 15, 15 million uh, on zombie defense and now it's uh, about 7 million uh, of the pirate. I have another question about the regions with the highest potential for mobile game developers uh, in the next three, three years, in your opinion. Do you see specific regions where you should focus as, as mobile game developers, publishers, in the next three years with the highest potential? I would be happy to answer. Yeah. Um, well, and, and just uh, uh, also adding to the last question, uh, I am pretty certain that there are game developers over here, as I am, uh, thinking what game to develop and uh, where to go and how to win the market. Actually, you must answer on these questions. That's absolutely correct before you start to do anything. But uh, at the same time, until you will deliver this product to the market, many things will change. And this is exactly what's happening, and we are uh, proud to be involved into this changing of the markets with our platform that we've built at Marca, that is uh, that has the focus to enter emerging markets, first of all, uh, to support uh, mobile gamers uh, and uh, big uh, companies uh, in a way how they can uh, deliver mobile gaming on the right scale uh, at the places where Google Play is not successful because of many reasons, etc. So the, there are things like that hap happening in this world, and they will happen. And um, what game developers should be worried about is uh, creating outstanding experience for the gamers, this is like number one. Talking about millions of uh, installs after that, this is what is following if your product is correct. Yeah, um, nothing else. I mean, emerging markets are really, really important and you have to be, um, you know, you have to observe the market to know where's the next big market. But first of all, I would say, I mean, this is also what we are doing at Good Game Studios. First of all, we focus on our home market. If you are not strong in your home market, you won't make it anywhere else. And beside that, I mean, emerging markets are also, yeah, somehow difficult because you don't know the whole um, scene. So I would say still for the next three years, I still would say it's the biggest market to crack is US for European developers especially because it always looks so easy to see this big titles like Clash of Clans, you know, and uh, all these Supercell games and Kabam, etc., uh, being very successful in, in US, but you see really less games from Europe cracking the US market. I think this is um, something what um, European companies should focus on to crack this market. And if you are successful there, imagine it's like in Hollywood blockbuster. If you have a big, big title, it's successful in the US. It can't go with this way from the US to anywhere else in the world because then you made it. <clears throat> I think this should be the focus. I know China and uh, Japan, Korea, India, Brazil, etc. It looks very appealing, very nice, but at the same time, it's also very, very difficult to be successful there because if you are sitting in Germany, you have engineers, very expensive engineers, and you are getting users from India. Yeah, you can get a lot of users from India, but you know, at the moment, maybe in the future, there will be more uh, third-party app stores will help you monetize them, but at the moment, it's really difficult, and that's why um, until none of these third-party app stores or Google, Apple, whoever, um, showed you that you can have success there, I wouldn't uh, focus uh, because on of pragmatic reasons. Also, what I like to add it's it's the culture. So, as we see in, in all these years, uh, when you look especially on on Nintendo or Sony, so there was always a different setup for Japan and, and for the, the Asian world, and this is still the thing also for mobile games. So, um, if you are successful with your product, for example, in, in Europe, it's it's not a, a how it's called a, it's not a wild card for Asia. So it's it's a completely different setup, and uh, for us it's the same thing. So be successful where we are from in your home market, and then 
conquer the rest. But I a bit disagree to Chala. So if you got the US, it's not automatic that you also will reach Asia or China. So because it's a completely different culture setup. And here I disagree. <laughs> Because, I mean, there are games out there, one build, such as Summoner's War, um, you know, and different other titles, I don't want to name them, all called Clash of Clans, etc. Um, the thing is, this is what I see, if you have really a great title, and I compare it with Hollywood, no one wants to watch a culturalized version of Lord of the Rings in China, or in the MENA region, or in Japan. They want to have the full Hollywood feeling. And this is exactly what I'm trying to say. Like, when you are successful in the US, you, you are, you know, this is Hollywood. When you are successful there in the app stores, automatically the, the people in the app stores, they're helping you to get visibility in the stores in, in South Korea or in Japan or in China. And of course, then you need to have the right contacts, the right app marketers to get um, users to the game. Of course, there are different ways of doing marketing. Like it's not the way we do marketing here in the West, like performance marketing, this is it. They, they, they do TV like crazy. Um, they do billboard, they do a metro station advertisement, you know, they do physical advertisement, they do it way different. You need to understand what they're doing there. But first of all, um, when you are successful in the US, they are helping you anyway to, to conquer it. I mean, we see Summoner's War. This game is just localized. It's one build and it's successful in South Korea, Japan, China, and in the West. So this is what I think, and this is also what I observe in the market. Because when I talk to um, publishers, they always want to change the whole game. You know, change this, change that, monetization mechanics, balancing this, that, graphic, whatever, then you can just build a new game. What are, you, what are we talking here? And this will, be, this will always lead to problems that you will never try to enter the Asian market. So because, yeah, then you need a new game. But you have one game and, you know, people are somehow um, demotivating instead of motivating when you have a successful game. So it's doable, in my opinion. Maybe if you compare it the whole time with the movie industry, so there is also, besides Hollywood, Bollywood, which is huge and, and successful, but only focus on one market. So I think we have to take it a bit like this also for gaming. So um, it's not known, out, uh, well known outside of India, but it's, uh, I think they produce more than all over movie companies in the whole world in India. So um, I think it also will turn in the same way for gaming. Yeah, but uh, Hollywood. <laughs> but the good. Yeah, but, but it's, <laughs> it's off the topic, so okay. <laughs> Sorry, we have it. We have a yeah. Whatever. The thing is, um, I think that Hollywood is made for global movies and Bollywood not, and this is the main difference. And if you produce for Hollywood, then you can make it anywhere else in the world. But if you only produce your game for the German market, of course, no one wants to. Uh, listen to, 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 I don't know, Bavarian um, township building game. They want to have a global farming feeling. So this, this might be the difference between Hollywood and Bollywood. So that's why we are focusing on Hollywood, like you guys too. You know, this is what we are doing. We, are, we all do global business. So there are games like Revenge of the Sultans, for example, very successful in the MENA region. This game will be never... Um, successful anywhere else in the world because it's sultans and you know it's for the region it's imp i wouldn't say it's impossible but it's impossible that this will be successful anywhere else in the world i can't imagine they have to change the title the look and feel of the game and everything then they can, they will have a new game so and that's why i think that this is the difference between bollywood and hollywood and we are producing for hollywood Mirek, what about your experience with yeah, different regions? Really interesting discussion. Uh, no, but uh, uh, I agree with uh, with uh, uh, Sergey. Uh, first, you need to have uh, a great game, and uh, what we do, uh, we do the games which are uh, actually I was to the game which I want to play, and it's like 90% of the games uh, which I see are games I would never play. It's like a waste of my time. So. Uh, if you have a game 
And we always try uh, this game to be uh, like a global game, that it's not, uh, not specifically uh, targeted anywhere. It's just, yeah, it's this uh, Hollywood style, because it's Hollywood is based on the US market, and uh, US uh, society is uh, very multicultural, uh, most plural society in the world, so, so they know how to do it. And uh, yes, we go this way. And uh, actually, we never target anything. We just release our games. And then we just look on the stats like, oh, that's nice, that's nice. Oh, look on the Russia, what happened there, whoa. <laughs> and then two months ago, wow, Filipino uh, regions, <laughs> everybody are sailing. <laughs> it's, uh, and it's uh, really interesting uh, because uh, yeah, we are a strange company. We are a really small company, a few experts sitting uh, in-house and doing games. Uh, and then we just put them out there in, and looking what's going on uh, with, uh, with the games. So, we never invested in any marketing. But lucky you, this is very uh, uh, No, I think that's something like uh, people get blinded. It's like, uh, in today's world, you need a marketing to sell something. I totally disagree. If you have shit to sell, you need marketing. If you had good product, it sells itself. Today, people, uh, they know, if you find a nice game, you tell it to your friends. It simply works this way. If you uh, uh, have a nice game, and this is uh, uh, how we do it. We release the game, we have like 100 downloads. And then we look on the, uh, uh, on the reviews and it's like, oh, it would be uh, nice to have, uh, I don't know, wind indicator on the right. So I just implement it, put it there, and the next day they have updated with the wind indicator on the right. And what they do, they, they immediately start feeling like the developers of this game. And they are talking like crazy about it. And uh, for us, for the first uh, like a month of development, it's like daily updates. Then there are uh, b daily updates. Then we uh, switch to weekly updates. And we, uh, through the first year, we are actually uh, uh, developing the game still together with our players. And this gives us really strong uh, uh, community, which, uh, yeah. I, I never paid any YouTuber and have hundreds of movies about uh, my games because they, uh, they want to do it. They, uh, we keep them, and they, it's something like this. You know, uh, uh, probably your game is not so well balanced. I have a million of dollars, but I just bought 30,000 just to help you. It's, it, it's really common. People just paying us money because they like us. Uh, we never like ask for the money. Uh, uh, every uh, uh, of our game you can play it through without spending uh, a dime, and they know it, and they are still buying. So that's uh, that's like uh, uh, that's like our uh, point of view on this. Uh, uh, and as, as I said, we are not targeting any specific uh, regions, uh, and those regions they somehow target itself. Because it's from month to month, it's, uh, the game is strong in, in other, uh, other regions and it's... Completely just, randomly or uh, you notice that in some specific regions your title is uh, strong? Uh, it's, it's like... Uh, in this moment, uh, it's like for, for the pirates, it's, uh, it's Russia uh, and the uh, South uh, Asia. Those are uh, two really strong, uh, strong uh, regions. Uh, U.S., Europe, uh, okay, U.S., Europe, they are strongest uh, f f f if you count the monetization. But in the, uh, th in the players, uh, th the amount of playing people those, uh, is Asia and, uh, uh, and Russia. And uh, let's stay for a while also with uh, region topic. I mean, it's always necessary to ask about your experience connected with Chinese market. Which one will be the biggest in the gaming sector? What is your current experience? Okay, uh, my answer will be fastest. Uh, my experience is none. It's like uh, we tried a few times, uh, discussed with some publishers, but it's like uh, uh, they always wanted like to change the game uh, so much and. Uh, the sp spreads will be like, you know, 20, 80. Oh, that's great spread. Uh, but no, but 20 is for you. <laughs> so, uh, and actually, we, uh, we didn't go there. It's more, more mess than, uh, than you can uh, earn from it. Uh, so I have no experience there. Totally agree. So for us, it's not a market. 
um, as we are strong and focusing on, on Europe, North America, and uh, yeah, it's it's the whole setup. It's a bit of pain, so that we do not challenge. Yeah, um, we challenged it in 2014. wasn't that easy. Um, I had at least 20 meetings in three days in Beijing, and I talked to publishers to 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 the gatekeepers such as Tencent. Um, 9-1 wireless back then, before they got acquired by Baidu, to Baidu itself, to Xiaomi, to uh, Q360, whatever you name it. So um, it's very fragmented, and there are a lot of um, web store, um, app stores out there, and um, everyone wanted to change the whole game. So and that was really a mess for us because we were a top-crossing game, globally number 20 as far as I remember back then. So we were really on, on the rise and. We were pretty sure that the game will be successful in China too, because I mean retention for a strategy game is never as high as an RPG game or casual game, but uh, monetization is very, very well done from the team, and that's why we were we were sure that we can make a success there. Then before uh, talking to to all these guys, we launched the game on iOS because that's pretty easy. We launched it there. We got a feature. We generated in just seven days. Oh almost 500,000 users, it was just like this. It's from the small app store, because uh, back then, um, iOS were covering between 12 and 15% of the whole ecosystem, and imagine what will happen if you go on Android, it would be crazy. And then finally, we had an agreement with Q360, it's the biggest third party app store. They said, you know what, you don't need to change anything, we give you a guarantee of registrations, we give you a guarantee of active players, whatever, and the contract was signed and we were super happy. We thought, now we will make it there. And at the end, yeah, nothing happened. <laughs> they didn't deliver. So this is also China. So if, you know, we did all the integration, we did everything. They start doing pre-registrations, campaigns here, campaigns there. And then after a week, they said, you know what? Well, we are not interested anymore. And we're like, okay, we have a contract. But they don't care. This is also China, so this is also something you need to know. If and this is, you know, sometimes you need to make experience to learn from it. Um, I know that many companies they take an advance payment. It can be recoupable, so you can, you know, it's recoupable, but it's for you a guarantee that they are serious about the cooperation. Mm -hmm. So and then and this is the only way I would uh, recommend to do, uh, make deals in China. But it's still crazy market, and it's worth to have a look at it, but not the initial first moves. So first, as I said, US would be the uh, main thing. Yeah, uh, we by ourselves tried a few times to enter China with different models, recoupable, non-recoupable, etc. Actually, if a uh, product is not accessible by audience, nothing will help. This is um, my my knowledge so far, and I would like to um, to be very much agree with uh, uh, Miroslav. Uh, look, we we all have in our teams high level professionals in gaming industry that are saying that the game should be done this and that way to to get success in this or another market. At the end of the day, only soft launch can tell if it's truth or not. Only the future of the game can prove it. Uh, so afterwards, some some people who has go into to some stages and saying words like we knew that we will get success in Spain or whatever in the US so okay th that's easy to say yes but at the end of the day it's only audience that will make up a decision and uh, this is very exciting and that's why when you were saying that um, we should think how to crack the market in the US fighting against Supercell etc again agree with Miroslav it's not it's not our goal as a game developers come on either we are marketing uh, company that would like to fight with them or we're creating a product that will fight by itself this is a huge difference and uh, to crack the market for myself means not like to, to be on a top grossing fighting with these guys who, who much more money uh, who has more money no it's about uh, having the product which provides um, return on investment, which is positive. When you've received this, no matter what is market, yes, you can invest further. And if your game providing even higher return on investment, then sooner or later you will get to the top positions. So uh, for me, first of all, it's development as it is. It's pure development of something, some new excitement for the audience uh, that you and your team strongly believe will bring the success. 
yeah, but not because the market uh, statistics, KPIs, so whatever audience preference at this certain moment is exactly the same and we're doing it this way. No, it's just um, because we believe that it will be a good game for, for the people. And that's, that's uh, our passion and our team at least. We, we do not regret about it so far. Um, I have another question uh, about trends uh, in mobile world, uh, about alternative app stores. Do you think it can be a solution to earn more money from mobile games for producers and other companies? I think it depends also on the product and uh, what kind of devices you want to reach. So for example, uh, gambling is not allowed on, on Google and also on Apple. Um, so if you have an alternative app store on Android, so it's not a problem to release the apps there. So I saw several companies who are um, yeah, specialized for gambling and they are quite successful by the third party app stores. And also sometimes it can happen, so Amazon is a nice example, which are not accessible via the Android Play Store. So if you want to completely reach a new target audience, um, then you have to set up the alternative app store uh, Amazon App Store, mm -hmm. uh, which is based on Android, so it's not that big thing for you, but um, it's um, yeah, a new audience that you can reach. Yeah, I think um, alternative app stores are important, and um, you need to, um, you know, for us, it's always important to be everywhere, so we want our users to find the game, doesn't matter where they are, and of course, usually, um, the alternative app stores are giving you free traffic, so they give you feature spots, guaranteed uh, feature spots, what you will yeah, usually not really get from Apple or Google, so you can definitely get more users to your game. But um, on the other hand, um, smaller companies with different objectives, they might survive with this, but bigger companies won't um, be able to pay all the bills they have to pay with alternative app stores it's not gonna happen, um, not yet, but maybe in the future, as I said, if there are coming more alternative app stores and more specialized in games. So, uh, because, you know, usually when uh, alternative app stores came out, they are, uh, they are trying to compete with Apple and Google and this is the wrong approach. When they start having a different approach, they start saying, hey, we have a really big editorial team, our focus is only games, from the best YouTubers who are promoting games, whatever, you, you just need to have a different approach, then you can grow it. But at the moment, there's nothing like that out, out there. So, yeah. Okay, maybe I quickly. Uh, is, uh, we are on a few different app stores, but uh, uh, right now, uh, after two years, it's like, uh, uh, it's more work than the revenue. So, uh, so the whole uh, other app stores release is uh, on the minus. Uh, maybe because of uh, our model that we have uh, a lot of updates and every update uh, for every app store means like half an hour work. So if I have six of them, I have the whole day just to pushing the game on the, on the uh, app stores and if I have update every week, uh, it sums up uh, and the uh, revenues are yeah, still uh, very low. It's, uh, it's, it's below 2% uh, 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 of uh, what uh, we do on uh, Google, Steam, and uh, iOS. Yeah, like you're saying, uh, there are no uh, stores, third-party stores that have solved many uh, issues and uh, become a, a profitable and attractive uh, place for game developers to come. You're absolutely right. Right, and you're absolutely right. I did not yet. And uh, here we are with our platform app marker, which is going to change this. So if you do have an Android game, please go to appmarker.com and uh, you will see how different it is. Um, com commenting your words about uh, how big is the revenue, absolutely the same approach. The revenue is not that big uh, on third-party stores because of the reason that there is nothing special over there. It's just another place where, besides of credit cards, thanks God, there are some local payment methods that is helping to monetize users. But again, uh, it uh, doesn't give any uh, new user experience, and users uh, anyway prefer to go to Google Play because there are more games there. There are somehow better for them. Yeah, and this is um, exactly what we are doing in AppMarker, being game developers for many years uh, uh, by ourselves. Certainly we're 
focused only one uh, thing, uh, a new gaming experience through many different uh, directions and not just local payment methods. So we're talking here about eSport, about tournaments, about many different events that are connected uh, as well together with the uh, top uh, companies and local markets that are struggling right now, observing how their users, millions of them, go into Google Play and spend their money over there, spend their time over there, and these guys are just simply providing internet connection or mobile phones uh, to help users to drive revenue to somebody else. Yeah, so uh, the time the time is coming. The, the, this world will, will get changed and I'm very excited uh, to, uh, to participate in it and I'm pretty certain that more and more uh, good third-party stores uh, will start to appear which has a business model not just to repeat Google Play but to improve it in many ways. We are doing it. I will be happy to, to talk with you, with all of you about it and see your games inside. And when you're talking about spending time on that, this is one of the reasons exactly why third-party stores do, uh, do not have impressive portfolio. Uh, of the games because it's all complicated. We are game developers know how, how many SDKs we have to integrate and every of them it's a headache. Yeah, and uh, we found the solution. We provide uh, automatic integration. It's just like uh, a work to be done by developers and then it, it is possible to deliver. Nobody's doing it. I don't know why. We did. There is one company. I don't remember name now. They just wanted uh, our. Uh, they just wanted agreement with us, and they, uh, every new update, uh, they just take it from the Google Play and release it on their site. Automatically exchange the paying methods. Not, uh, yeah, not, not, and, quite, and, and, uh, not quite right like to them. take it by yourself. Yes, developer anyway should enter the development panel and upload it. Otherwise, you can go and take the Clash of Clans and put inside of your store and start driving you can revenue. Do it. Some but companies that's, but doing that's in, uh, it's, Some it's, companies it's, doing it's illegal, yeah, of I know. Course. I know. I, I, I found uh, one day uh, something like 12,000 uh, copies of my game, different versions, uh, because they didn't change the uh, ID uh, uh, of the uh, uploading. And on the uploading, suddenly I saw that I don't have two uh, applications, I have thousands of applications and they've been called zombie defense uh, XXZ, zombie defense XXZ1, or zombie defense ABCD and like <laughs> Okay, but they've been still, uh, uh, you know, monetizing, <laughs> sending <laughs> advertising to, to my account, so I've been still doing money out of it. But uh, yeah, that's happening. Okay, let's move to two other hot topics, I mean VR and AR. New technologies that will leverage mobile revenues or only is just hot bus? What's your mind, opinion? Yeah, if you don't mind, I will start. Uh, I'm not a big deliver, uh, be believer of uh, VR, more AR. But anyway, I'm busy with uh, many other stuff and so I'm not focusing on that. And I prefer to not answer on that. Good answer. <laughs> um, I would say... Um, VR is something, I don't know why, but everyone is focusing on. It's, a, it's interesting, it's experimental, but actually it's not a mass market. So I'm not talking from, um, hey, let's try, let's see what will happen, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's because as a company, we have to focus on where can we, you know, be successful and successful is our definition means uh, making revenues, of course, because we have to pay bills and we want to, in success, is revenues. I know that Game of War, you wouldn't play Game of War. No one is playing it, but out of sudden they make so much money, whatever. So um, the thing is um, that AR will be successful, I think so, just not because AR is something um, more unique than VR, but AR is something, you can have it in your phone, you can take it with you, it's nothing, I mean, your, your wife, your girlfriend is shopping and she's in the dressing room, you can play with your uh, phone. You don't, need to, you, need, you don't need to put your headset on and you know, play like, you won't do it. So um, that's why it's a mass market in my opinion, that's why it's gonna be big. Beside that, uh, I think during the WWDC, this uh, June, Apple will make a quite big announcement um, regarding um, AR, this is also what Tim Cook said just a few months ago. He said that AR might be as big as smartphones and if they will integrate something like AR thing into their uh, latest, uh, their new phones, I think then that, that could be a game changer. And I think AR will be big, yeah. 
Um, I totally agree. So um, I think at the end it's uh, the social feature, so that you do not turn uh, put on some glasses and you are out of the world. So it's that you are for you alone. Uh, with um, AR, it's it's more that you can play with someone together and 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 see the others. And uh, for example, or if you I don't know watch an AR movie uh, together, then you can share still the popcorn because you can see the popcorn, uh, which doesn't happen with the VR. So. Okay, I don't have experience with AR, but uh, uh, I've been working on VR since 2013, like before everybody else. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I was a, I was a, a big, big enthusiast of uh, of uh, this uh, uh, new technology. Uh, for me, it was always like okay, the big screen, the actually to be inside. I, for horror games, for shooters, uh, for uh, simulators, uh, great stuff. I've been uh, for half a year uh, into the uh, development of uh, VR Google, Google's, uh, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it wasn't in my company, so somehow uh, it didn't went uh, well. I, I left the company and uh, and it get uh, bankrupt. But uh, not because of the of the idea, because of the uh, yeah the disagreements with uh, investors. Uh, but uh, VR is uh, uh, is something like a, a console gaming. That's uh, that's that's not mobile gaming. Okay, you can uh, put your smartphone into the glasses, but uh, you need a safe environment to play it. You cannot take it uh, with you anywhere. Uh, you need to invest uh, your time in the game, uh, and if you want to invest your time. Then it's uh, better to have a, a VR for the console because then you have better graphics, more power. Uh, on the on the smartphones, yeah, it's always some like semi VR experience. It's still you can look around and uh, everything is okay, but uh, you never will have this kind of uh, quality like uh, on the real uh, VR game. And uh, I strongly believed in this market few years uh, ago, but now I'm, I'm not believing in it anymore. And actually, I'm just about to release uh, our first big VR game, and uh, a month ago we decided to just uh, put a 2D mode to it. So that's it's regular mobile game and PC game with VR mode. Okay, I have another question as um, in mobile in mobile game production to for, for the marketing, uh, bigger and bigger names are being involved. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Kate Upton, and many, many more. Are we facing um, a mobile game brand marketing era? Regarding to you, gentlemen, not because you guys believe in organic growth, organic revenues. Um, I think this proves that it's unfortunately not like you guys think it is, because in my opinion it's a very, very tough industry, but it really depends, of course, what your goals are. As uh, Tobias, al Tobias also said, the 10%, what is, less, uh, what is left, it's still a big piece of cake. So it really, you need to figure out where you, wanna, where you want to um, have your clash. But um, if you want to be one of the big guys, then I would say um, it's now going from the new marketing industry to the old marketing industry, like branding. Branding is getting really, really big. People are really, I mean, back then I, I, I used to play football for, I don't know, 15, 20 years when I was a kid, and we always bought Adidas. That was crystal clear, you buy Adidas football shoes. But then after a while, uh, I'm taking a look around, everyone is wearing Nike too. In the past, there were no, no Nike, but Cristiano Ronaldo is wearing Nike, so that's why people wear Nike. So branding was always something very big in, in the old industry, and now it's coming more and more to the new industry. And that's why I think these kind of names like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Kate Upton, Neil, um, I don't know, all these other um, actors and YouTubers, etc. So this classic um, performance marketing is, I think, between 60 and 70 percent of your marketing. The rest, 40 to, uh, 30 to 40 percent, should be branding and um, dealing with these big names to, to get users uh, more interested in your games. If you want to be 
top grossing game. So it's really important. Yeah, so what I can add, so it was the whole time there and it will be also there in the future. So like the whole FIFA series from EA was still with testimonials from, from superstars from football. So and, and, and also on other products. So if a company got a face, which is a testimonial or some kind of, of prom guy, <laughs> uh, so then it will be yeah, there for the future also in the new market. Okay, so due to we have we not enough time, uh, Shagla, maybe a question first for you because I remember uh, our in-depth interview and uh, your talk uh, something about the biggest flops in 2016. <laughs> uh, so, question for all of you. What's, uh, in your opinion, was the biggest flops in uh, mobile gaming last year? Um, in my opinion, as I said in the interview, it was Super Mario, um, because there was a, such a big uh, buzz and the whole industry start talking about Super Mario here, Super Mario there, and Apple, Google, they featured them several times, etc. But um, why it was a flop? Uh, it was a flop because expectations were way different. Um, and um, in terms of monetization, and they were focusing, I mean, they didn't focus that much into in-app purchases. So that's why the monetization was super pure, poor. And that's why, um, yeah, the, what they wanted to deliver didn't happen. And if you look now into the app stores, the game is invisible and it's less than a year. Same here, so also Super Mario, nothing to add. I agree, Super Mario. Um, additionally, with the reason I think that when somebody is trying to, uh, to make people take a decision that they will play this game because they have to, it's not how it's going to work, in my opinion. Always people will make their choice. Uh, always they will... Uh, investigate, evaluate, and they will search for the better solution. In this highly competitive world, it is difficult to do, because when you enter Apple Google Play, you see like in top grossing, like on, on, only the same games, yeah? So it is hard to do, yeah? Therefore, again, uh, I'm strongly a believer in third-party stores that will be focused on different uh, kind of things that will be more fair to developers, and first of all, more fair to users. Uh, delivering them the experience that they somehow cannot uh, find anymore. So for me, uh, example of uh, Super Mario, ex exactly the flop, but because of this reason, uh, they push too much. That's my opinion. Um. Yeah, <laughs> it was the biggest flop, so it's like, you should ask about uh, three biggest flops. <laughs> so <laughs> then, then we had a chance. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I agree with uh, with Sergey. Uh, uh, this game uh, was a brand. That's it. But uh, this brand was why well, it was a great game twenty years ago. Come on, the world changed, and they changed nothing. Okay, you know, cosmetic changes, but yeah. And uh, of course, uh, 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 Pokemon Go. It wasn't a flop, but uh, it like it was like close together and we have like Pokemon Go which is like completely uh, new uh, idea of the game something absolutely fresh and everybody uh, uh, talks about it and play it and everything and then you have Super Mario which is like uh, let's back to the f <laughs> past <laughs> mm, I have uh, last question as, as we, we are running the time uh, what is your recommendation for Polish game developers, for especially mobile game developers? Um, maybe do you know any mobile game developers? And what would you recommend, basing on your experience? I will not say something new. Develop games that you would like to play. Develop games for people. I think it's very often people like us sitting on the stage saying these words, but I really mean it. Um, yeah, um, I mean, I see a lot of potential in in Poland, and um, I'm, I'm I mean, we all know that there are a lot of Polish companies um, work, uh, doing work for hire. They produce games for Jam City, for Vuga, for I don't know, big brands, Disney, whatever. But usually they just, um, I mean, 
not all of them, of course. There are a few good um, game developers and successful game developers, but I see that a lot of um, the Polish game developers are doing work for hire, and I think there is a lot of potential. They should do their, I mean, they should learn from these uh, brands, how to work for Disney, how to work for Jam City, Vuga, etc. But then they can take it to the next level and do their own thing. Because as I said, I mean, it's difficult, but it's doable because it's only two stores and you can reach the whole world. And as I also said, start being successful in your country, in your home country, and then you can take it to anywhere else. Yeah, that would be my recommendation. Yeah, my recommendation sounds maybe a bit random, so it's passion. Uh, focus on your product. Focus really from the beginning to the end, if there is an end. So with a mobile product, so we are updating, updating, updating. And uh, keep on going that you deliver a high quality. So it's, yeah. The thing is, um, do not try to, to produce something and... and like, oh, I need to be the next king or I don't know what. Um, but really, try to deliver that, that something where your heart is in and then, yeah, you will be successful at the end. Yeah, you think, I think you covered it uh, up. And I say uh, uh, one more thing. Do not clone existing games. Ever. It never, never works. I know it's like, oh, look, Clash of Clans. I know how to do such game. It would be six months of development and uh, we are feeling okay. But you just waste your six uh, months of your life and uh, resources. Better do something uh, what uh, does not exist. Uh, I can tell you, two years ago, I just uh, get idea to do a pirate game. Stupid idea. So I just open Google Play, key in pirate, 5,000 pirate games. I say, ah, okay, that's about the idea about pirate games. Uh, but then I start to look on the games. And after, I don't know, 12 pages, I didn't found even one. It's like, you know, much free pirate games, <laughs> farming pirate games, do something pirate game. Hey, try it by yourself. And uh, then I uh, get to this, okay, uh, the first is the Assassin's Creed uh, uh, Black Flag. So, okay. 800 megabytes, okay, downloaded it. Looks nice. Uh, story starts nice. Music, okay. Let's play it. And then the first battle. And come on. I have my ship, other ship, and he's uh, shooting, and I'm sweeping my finger to dodge his bullets with the ship? Come on, somebody's kidding me? <laughs> hey, and out of it, I just sit and make a pirate game. Like a Sid Meier's Pirates, the game with uh, uh, full physics, 3D, swimming, everything. I put it there, and since one and a half year, I'm a number one. Because I just make a solid pirate game. And the other such game does not exist. Can anybody imagine it? <laughs> but I wasn't. Is this not somehow cloning it too? And somehow, I mean, when we look at Clash of Kings, mm -hmm. it's a 100% copy of Game of War, mm -hmm. and it's very successful due to the reason they just made it better. Uh, it's, yeah, but uh, both of those games uh, exist in at the same uh, uh, time frame. Uh, and right now, the other pirate games didn't exist yet. And there was a huge market, which nobody noticed, because everybody just looked like, okay, there is uh, 5,000 pirate games, uh, no one uh, is successful. So, not interesting. And then I just make one, and it's, uh, Absolutely successful because, uh, and uh, that's it. When you look on the uh, uh, on the reviews, like uh, the people just saying, "This is the the best pirate game ever made." It's like, no, it's probably not. But the others have been uh, years ago on the PC, and here it's like, uh, okay, it was a big uh, uh, a big uh, development. It took me uh, six months, which is extremely long uh, for me. To, to make this game. And uh, I understand that for the studio to, to make such a game, it's, it's about $10 million uh, into development. If somebody does not have my knowledge, because uh, uh, you know, for me, sailing is, uh, is my love. I know everything about the ships, and I have 20 plus years experience in the game development. I, can, uh, I coded this game, I made the whole graphic, whole shaders, uh, put a story in, uh, all the stuff. 
It's, it came out of, uh, out of uh, my heart. But the main reason for it to happen was that there was not such a game. And I uh, still believe that there are a lot of areas where, uh, where there are games, which we know that should be, but they does not exist yet. So, so good advice, really, really good advice. So summarizing, make games that people love. Make games for yourself, work for yourself, be passionate and do not clone, be creative. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, once again, our guest, Sergei Shalom, Czech Lareger, Tobias Edl, Miroslav Dymek. Thank you very much. Thanks.